Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 16. Repainting the boiler supports and the chimney. Marking out the boiler cladding sheet for the Stuart S50 and Stuart 10V. Using the existing cladding as templates. Cutting out the parts using my small guillotine and carefully drilling the required holes. The first job is to paint the boiler supports. I'm going to paint these inside and out and when I think about it I should have started with the inside first. But it doesn't really matter, I'll be very careful not to mark the outside when I paint the inside. You will probably have noticed that I am not using the normal grey etching primer. I'm using heat resistant paint because this doesn't need a primer. So in itself it becomes a very good primer for any other coat of paint on top. With the added advantage of actually being heat resistant paint because these parts will get very hot. This heat resistant paint is very prone to running or sagging and it's quite different to the paint that I would normally use and which I will probably use over the top of this first coat. The paint I will be using to finish the job is called HMG C71 Satin Black and it's beautiful paint to use. It's enamel based and it's quite heat resistant on its own but it should be better being painted over the top of heat resistant paint in the first place. Here's a bit of a bonus for some viewers, it's a shot of the paint drying. And while that's happening, I'm rubbing down the paintwork on the chimney. It has a long scratch down one side. What I intend to do is paint this with the heat resistant paint and then rub it down thoroughly with wet or dry sandpaper. All I'm doing at the moment is using a piece of Scotch Brite to key it for the first coat of paint. It's ready for painting and what I need now is something to support the chimney while I paint it. I was really lucky because I found this. It was a part from a radio control aeroplane that I've rebuilt. And the holes in it are just the right size to support the chimney. I'm not spraying massive thick coats in one place. I'm actually spraying quite light coats. Then I rotate the part and give it another light coat. And by the time I've rotated the part at 360 degrees, I can start the process again. This way I don't get any drips or sags. And end up with a very even coat of paint over the entire item. Now for the hard part. I'm going to put a few warnings in before I start this job. It is not easy. This is what Stuart models sell as cylinder cladding these days. It used to be made from anodized steel, but now it's made from anodized aluminium which marks as soon as you look at it. You have to be very careful with it. I'm using the original cladding from the S50 and the 10V as templates. And here, this is the cladding from the S50. I'm very carefully scribing around the original piece of cladding. The marking out as usual isn't perfect, but these scribed lines are more than good enough to show me where I need to cut the cladding. This marked out area will become the cladding for the S50. The next part of the job is to use the existing brass cladding from the Stuart 10V and do exactly the same. Position it on the cladding and draw around it with a scriber. This job is nerve wracking. One slip of the scriber and it's ruined. And OK, it's no big deal. This new cladding costs just over £13 with VAT and delivery. But as the cylinder cladding is a really important part of both engines, it does need to be near perfect. Here's a story so far. Quite simple. All I need to do is just cut on the lines. And I'm going to use this gadget that I bought a while back. It's called a Clark Metal Worker. And it's really useful. Not only is it a guillotine, it has bending rollers in the top. A health and safety warning, I have removed the guard so the blade is exposed. This machine is potentially dangerous with an exposed blade, but I'll try not to put my fingers in there. And I will replace the guard as soon as I've finished the job. The guide at the right hand side at the front is very useful, because it makes sure that the piece of sheet metal being cut by the guillotine is square to the blade. There goes the first cut, one down. I've turned the cladding round and I'm doing the same at the other side. This part of the job is very easy. The machine is accurate, the blade is sharp. Now I'm cutting the long part of the cladding. And once again, the sharp blade makes short work of it. With at least six of my fingers intact, I move on to the next part of the job. Some viewers may be thinking, 
Well, it's all right for you having this small guillotine. What if I don't have a guillotine? Well, there are other methods of cutting this stuff. You could cut the metal with a very sharp Stanley knife blade. You saw when I used the scriber that it marked the metal quite easily. Using a pair of scissors is not recommended, although for one of the operations you've no real choice. This is a piece of scrap and it's a good idea to practice on things like this. It's what I cut off the cladding that I bought for my triple expansion engine that I'm rebuilding. It's good to have this to experiment on. As you can see, I made a hole in it and I curved this piece of cladding using a bending roller. Not the bending rollers that are in the Clark Metal Worker though, I have a smaller set. Now it's time for the more difficult part. I'm using a pair of scissors to cut part of the cladding and this will curl around the cylinder edges. When cutting the part with an old pair of scissors, you can see that the metal bends downwards. So don't forget, when you cut the other side, turn the part over. In this clip I'm using the piece of scrap again to demonstrate the principle. I haven't turned the part over, and if I don't turn the part over to cut the second slot, both of the cut edges will point in opposite directions. These tabs that you're cutting need to point the same way. Sometimes when you use scissors, the parts distort, so you can gently tap the part back into position with a hammer, but the hammer face needs to be very even and smooth. Positively shiny, in fact. Now it's fun time. Drilling holes in this stuff is difficult. The drill wants to wander all over the place. It's not a good idea to use a centre punch because the centre punch will distort the metal, so I do it this way. Scribing through the original cladding leaves a ring. Before putting pressure on the drilling machine, I need to position the drill bit exactly in the centre of the ring. I've done a lot of this sort of thing over the years, so generally speaking, I do get it right, but I still find it nerve-wracking. This larger ring is the exhaust port, and watch how the drill wanders, and I didn't get it in the middle anyway. In this clip I'm committing what I would call a cardinal engineering sin. I'm using the drill as a milling cutter to enlarge the hole and centralise it. I'm sure many experts will be cringing at this, but believe me, it works and it's not dangerous. I cannot recommend using a quarter of an inch diameter twist drill. A few things could go spectacularly wrong. I think this drill bit is about two and a half millimetres and both the physical size of the drill bit and the power of the machine that I'm using means it's not going to grab and spin round and cut my fingers. One thing you have to remember when doing jobs like this is as you look at the part you may think well that hole's not in the right place so you would drill it in the right place but then the problem is the reason it isn't in the right place is because it matches the one in the existing cladding that fitted the engine. And once again, the exhaust port is a bit of a fail. The drill goes through in the wrong place, but I'm using it again as a milling cutter to centralise the hole. A word of caution, don't be tempted to use a small milling cutter or a really coarse burr, because the job will go spectacularly wrong if you do that. I've decided to refit the drain cocks against my better judgement, and these are the drain cock holes so I do need to be accurate with these. If I drill the hole in the wrong place, that would not be good. The question is, are these parts going to fit on the engine? Well, you'll find out in the next episode. Because that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.